It helps to stay fit if you expect to keep the pace in the NFC's Eastern Division. For the second straight year, the Washington Redskins, the Dallas Cowboys, and the St. Louis Cardinals were engaged in a down-to-the-wire dogfight for two playoff spots, and St. Louis strongman Conrad Dobler wanted to be ready. Last week's most crucial matchup had a Don Coriel's eight and three Cardinals against Tom Landry's eight and three Cowboys. And the great game possibilities made everybody smile. This quarterback Jim Hart was testing a tender knee under scrutiny of the Dallas Cowboys. In the previous 11 meetings between the two teams, Dallas had won nine times. And the confident Cowboys looked to a wealth of big game experience to pull them through once again. St. Louis hopes rested with a gimpy need quarterback and a gently lofted prayer. Somehow the prayer escaped three Dallas defenders and nestled snugly in the grateful grasp of terrific Terry Metcalf. Metcalf couldn't quite believe that one himself, but Jim Hart was on the right track and there was nothing sloppy about touchdown number two. Tiny Mel Gray took his turn in the end zone as the eager Cardinals gratefully accepted a surprising early advantage. A repeat documents the classic NFL bomb. Hart simply threw the ball as far as he could, and Mel Gray outran everybody in a blue shirt. The St. Louis bombing run set a tempo that Cowboy quarterback Roger Staubach was unable to match. Without a consistent pass rush from the front four all season, St. Louis depends on team defense, like a surprise double blitz to keep an opponent off balance. With Staubach properly confused, Jim Hart continued to chew up the Dallas defense with impeccable pass protection from an offensive line that has allowed him to be sacked only six times all season. The hands belong to Ike Harris, a fourth round draft choice in 74 who played instead in the WFL. Harris finally came to St. Louis this season and soon took a starting position away from Earl Thomas with catches like this one. Hart to Harris set up a just enough touchdown vault by number 34, Steve Jones. And amazingly, the St. Louis Cardinals took a 28 to three halftime lead over the unbelieving Dallas Cowboys. There have been many seemingly hopeless predicaments in Cowboy history, and almost as many impossible comebacks. So when Roger Staubach shifted back into his shotgun to start the second half, he had to believe anything could happen. What appeared was the ghost of Roger the Dodger, the Heisman Trophy winner of 1964, complete with the U.S. Naval Academy jump pass. With nothing to lose, Staubach opened things up and the Cowboys began to move down the field, working the middle with tight end Billy Joe Dupree, number 89, and then swinging outside to running back Robert Newhouse, number 44. In the second half alone, Staubach completed 18 of 29 for 222 yards. And when he couldn't throw, there were other ways to get the job done. In the late afternoon chill of Bush Stadium, Staubach passed and scrambled Dallas back into contention as two touchdowns shrunk the Cardinal lead to 11 points. But Dallas had started this comeback too late. Time was running out and Staubach was forced to throw nearly every play into a swarming prevent defense. The result was inevitable.
Cornerback Roger Worley ended two fourth quarter threats with goal line interceptions to nail down a solid 31-17 St. Louis victory and vault the Cardinals into sole possession of first place in the NFC East. The victory plus a Detroit loss clinched a second consecutive playoff berth for a team that didn't learn to win until Don Coriel arrived from San Diego State with a plan. Now, terrific Terry Metcalf and the Cardinals are anxious to show the world that the best is yet to come. <laughs> <laughs>